Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Convos and Coffee. Hope you're having a great morning so far today, and I'm excited to start a new series about freedom. And for the next couple of months, the Convos and Coffee will be talking about different aspects of freedom, and I hope that you are experiencing freedom in your life. In January, Peter uh, gave the word for the year for Bethel. It was 2022 is the year of freedom. And if you've been part of our services in person or online, I know that you are tasting uh, freedom as a body together. And we pray that individually we walk in freedom in our lives every single day. So today, what is spiritual freedom all about? Well, Jesus came to offer an opportunity for us to live in wholeness, free from oppression, free from the chains of sin in our lives. His word actually says this in John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. And what this word means, means unrestrained, at liberty. Freedom puts us in a position when we are accepted by God as a citizen of God's kingdom. God takes the position that we have of freedom a step further. We're not just citizens. But we are now sons and daughters of God. Romans 8, 15 says, So you've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. And that phrase Abba means Daddy. It talks about closeness and an intimacy now that we have with God. Now the key to spiritual freedom is submission to God. And if we continue to walk in sin... What happens in our lives is we feel weighed down, we feel frustrated, we feel condemned all over again. When Jesus paid the price on the cross for us to walk with all of that lifted off of us, when we choose to follow after God with all of our hearts and all of our minds and all of our strength, we begin to walk in freedom. That's the key to spiritual freedom, walking with God daily. What freedom is not is doing the right and correct things. It's not performance based. It's not relying on ourselves and just hoping that we get it right or thinking God is up there watching, ready to, you know, pounce on us and go, ah, oh, you did it wrong again. No, it's about walking with him, relying on his Holy Spirit, not on ourselves to just do the right thing. But you were set free with the power of the Spirit and have all the strength you need to walk that freedom out. God's word says this in Romans 8, 1 to 6, and I love this passage. So there is no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus. Why don't you say that? There is no condemnation over me today. Because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our own sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the body we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. And he did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Goes on to say this in verse five. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about the things that please the Spirit. So let your sinful nature, so by letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Walking with the Holy Spirit, talking to God, getting in the Word, letting something fresh Roll over your mind and your heart every day. Um, a word that is supernatural, that transforms how you think, that gives you that strength to do what you want to do for God, to, to lay aside all the things that are like weighing you down. We have that through Jesus and we walk in it through intimacy with him. God provided a way for spiritual freedom in our lives through Jesus. He knows that we're weak as humans. So instead of like putting his foot down and rubbing our face in it, he gave us a more excellent way. He sent Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is essential for our freedom. We can try to do all the right things on our own, but that's why we have the Holy Spirit with us. 
um, when Jesus was resurrected, he left us the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our strength, our guide, our teacher, everything we need to walk out our lives in this freedom. Spiritual freedom is a beautiful treasure that each of us have. It is a treasure to be pursued. It's not just a moment when you accept Jesus in your life. Yes, you are set free from sin then, but we have to walk that out daily in partnership with God. And as you grow, you get stronger. As you walk in obedience, you get stronger. As you get to know God and how much he loves you, you get stronger. And the temptations that you have right now, they get less and less. They have a less hold on you because you're relying on the Holy Spirit. You may be tempted by other things, but you will be free from those things that are trying to steal life from you as you walk with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says this in Hebrews 12, 1, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge cloud of witnesses, crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Spiritual freedom as part of your faith journey, your personal story. It's yours today. I want to encourage you on this Wednesday to stay close to God. Walk with him, talk with him, confess your sin. And if you fall down, get back up again with the power of God. It's okay to fall. You have to get back up. And when you do, you walk in the freedom that Jesus provided for you on the cross. Then you live truly free. I want you to have a wonderful day. I can't wait to see you tonight at prayer. We are online. Bethel Praise is at 630. And this is a great way for us to come together and to grow in our freedom together, to call out to God for our church and for our city and for our nation and for the lives of the people that we love who still don't know him. So won't you join us tonight? We can't wait to see you. God is doing something powerful. I'm so glad you're a part of it. God bless you.